Okay, so first thing, get comfortable with your guitar. It's actually not the most comfortable instrument. Um, it's very easy to be sitting slouched. Try to sit upright, try to have the guitar straight. And we don't want to be tipping the guitar like this to play. It actually makes it way harder to, to play. Um, and the other thing is, I know you really want to see what you're playing, but it doesn't help you that much. The, the feel, okay, the communication to your brain from what you're feeling is going to help you way more in the long run. So we're going to be relying more on that uh, as you get more experienced. So the first thing we're going to be doing today is learning an E chord, um, but you need to hold a pick, okay? Yes, you can use a thumb pick playing rockabilly. Don't stress about that. You can if you like, okay? Just slot that thumb pick on. Otherwise, hold your pick. Uh, you actually want to hold your pick. I just dropped it. You actually want to just get your get the pick, put it against your thumb, okay? Pointing towards the ground. See how I'm perpendicular to the ground? Is that right? Put your thumb against uh, the pick against your thumb and just close your hand like that, okay? My, my finger by the way, actually tends to brush sometimes on the strings. So you might want to curl your knuckle a little bit more. Okay, so you sort of want to do that sort of thing. Okay, pointing at the guitar. You don't want the pick pointing off that way. You don't want the pick pointing off that way. You want the pick pointing straight down at the face of the guitar. And when we strum, try not to have an angle. We want to go directly across the strings. So, but we're not even up to strumming yet. So let's talk about the left hand. Now, if we're going to form a chord, okay, what we're going to do, just big thumbs up, put it behind the neck of the guitar, pointing towards the roof. I don't want to see your thumb poking over. See how you can, you can see my thumb? He's gone. He's there, he's gone. He's got to be gone. Keep your thumb hiding, okay? That's because as we bring that thumb up, we actually rob our fingers of reach or we overshoot the fretboard. It's all kinds of problematic. Yes, when I play, I don't do that all the time now, but I've been playing for 30 years, so I have found things that are comfortable comfortable for me over the time. Um, so just stick with this for now, and you can make adjustments um, when you're a professional rockabilly player too, okay? Um, if that's what you want to call it. Anyway, get your second finger, okay? This one, and put it on the second... Kids laugh when I do that, I'm not sure why. Put your um, second finger on the second fret of the fifth string, Okay, I know we haven't gotten into the names of the strings and stuff. Let's just address that straight away. So firstly, let's just think of the numbers. String one, which is the skinniest string, not the fattest string. Okay, skinniest strings. Think of them as sizes. String one, string two, string three, string four, string five, string six. Okay, now they are named from the... Uh, let's go from the fattest one for this though. E, A, D, G, B, and E. But you'll forget that very quickly. There are all kinds of ways you can remember it. I just, I would just recommend writing it down, okay, and just going over it before you start playing the guitar. I will address the strings in terms of the number, um, but I can also do a bit of referring to them as their names as well. So back to the the this finger. I won't do it again. Might get a strike on YouTube. Um, put my second finger on the second fret of the fifth string, okay. Which so my thumbs at the back. And the frets, by the way, are these spaces between. You probably already know this, but uh, I'll just remind you anyway. This is the nut. So fret one is everything beyond the nut behind this piece of steel. So fret two is now behind this piece of steel, this area here. So the frets are actually the pieces of steel. The area behind is where we, we press. Now, when we press, we really don't want to be flat with our finger. We want to be up like this, okay? Nice and tall, okay? Uh, at the highest point of your finger. Now, if you've got long nails, they're going to start hitting the, the wood, okay? And that means you're probably actually doing reasonable technique, but you have to cut your nails because you want to get that finger nice and tall, okay? So I'm using my second finger there on the second fret of the fifth string or A string. We then put our third finger on the second fret of the fourth string, and we tuck it in nice and tight against your second finger, okay? And then... Put your first finger on the uh, first fret of the third string. Now, with all of these, try and get them nice and close to the fret that way, okay? Okay, on, on this side of the guitar, towards the bridge. This is called the bridge, by the way. So, on the bridge side, um, closest... On the, on the... How can I put this? So, in the fret space, get close to the fret. Just on this left-hand side, or my side here. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining this. I'll just show you, okay? the zoom doesn't freak out. Try and get closer to that edge. Obviously, this finger is going to struggle a little because we need to make room for this one. 
But this finger's nice and strong anyway. You can see my thumb. I'll get a slap on the wrist for that. First finger, nice and close to the fret. Not back here. Okay, it's a lot harder when you move back there, so you don't want to do that. Okay, hold all of those down at once and strum. Wow, congratulations if you haven't done that before. Now the thing is, that felt like a lot of work. Yes, it is a lot of work. That is an E major chord, okay? And it feels impossible now, but here's the good news. You're slow. The part of your brain that you're using right now is slow, okay? But the part of your brain that you're going to rely on to play these chords is really fast. So if we do this really accurately and take our time, okay, the fast part of our brain is going to be able to spit that out instantly if we learn to trust it, which is something I'm going to help you with along the way. But your first step is make that chord, okay? And then what you do, squeeze nice and tight, strum, pick the strings individually to see that everything's clean. If you find this, you're not pressing tight enough or you're leaning, you're sort of leaning your fingers too much this way and you're blocking the strings. So get that thumb around, fingers nice and tall, pick the strings, see if we can get them individual or spend time getting them clean and individual. Okay, once you've got them sounding nice and clean, strum. Don't hold the pick too tight. Okay, relax your grip a little bit and just let the pick flow across the strings. Don't dig the pick too far in. If you feel like there's resistance, you're putting the pick too far close to the body. Just run it along the top, okay? Think of it like scooping butter. Do you want to take a huge chunk of butter or do you want to take just a little bit? Just drag it across the top of the butter or else it digs in. That's probably not a great analogy. Uh, I use analogies a lot. You'd think I'd start getting good at it. But anyhow, okay? Enjoy that sound. You made that sound, okay? Um, you really want to get good at enjoying the process and not worrying too much about the outcome or you're going to get fed up with this very quickly because it is challenging, okay? Now squeeze your fingers, relax your fingers, okay? And squeeze again and strum. Relax your fingers, squeeze again and strum. Don't lift them off the strings, just relax them. We're strengthening the muscles, we're training the muscles. So you might do that for your first practice session, okay? But of course, I'm going to give you a little bit more. Only thing is, we're going to speed it up a little bit now and I'm going to send you away with practice. Now, people think that their, their lesson a week, their half hour lesson or whatever it may be is you know the most important part of their week. No, it's actually everything that you do in between. So let me give you some guidance on that as we go. But first, let's learn the next chord that we're going to be doing today. That's going to be the A chord. So now this probably doesn't sound like rockabilly just yet, but bear with me. So we're going to now play an A chord, which is the A string or fifth string open. Makes sense. My second finger is on the second fret of the D string, okay, which is the very next string or the fourth string. And we want to get close to that fret, yes, but come back a little because you're going to need room, okay? Use your second finger, not your first, okay? Use your second finger, trust me. It's just easier. Put your third finger on the second fret of the third string. Put your pinky on the second fret of the second string, okay? Uh, so tuck them in, really get your fingers working as a unit there. Squeeze them together and press down all at once. And we're going to do the same thing. Make sure our fingers are nice and tall, okay? And we're going to pick from the fifth string down. Nice and clean. You may lose the first string. I wouldn't panic if that was the case. The chord still sounds great without that string. But if you really want it, just roll that hand, get it nice and tall. Okay, and if you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. And of course, if you know anyone that you know wants to learn this stuff, share it with them. So that's the A chord. And you'll want to practice the same thing. You'll want to, you know, squeeze it and relax and train those muscles. And you might do that for a couple days, okay? When you get more confident, you can start lifting your fingers up higher and seeing what happens. You'll see that they completely rearrange themselves into some weird shape and don't want to go back. That's okay. Get them organized, put them back, and we now practice forming the chord in a very quick, repetitive fashion. So we would practice relax. Start to lift them. As you get more confident, you can lift your fingers right up. And hopefully after a week, you might find you can start to get the chord to land. Get the A chord to land, okay? And uh, we've got one more chord. So use that same technique for both chords. We've got the B7. As I said, we're gonna move a little quicker now. 
Um, put your second finger. Uh, we, let's come back to the E chord first. I want you to do this. So you've played the A chord. I'm going to start talking about changing chords. So even if it takes you a good bit of time to get that chord, I want you to try this. Bring your fingers back to the fifth string. Like, you know, we're going to play the E chord. So we're going to bring it back here. I don't need my pinky now. In fact, I just need my first finger on the third string. So I need to remove my pinky and I need to put my first finger on the first fret of the third string. Okay? We're back to E. I'm just telling you to play an E again. Because when we do the next chord, which is a B7, okay, what we're going to do here, we're going to, to put our first finger up one string, or technically down in terms of pitch, to the D string, and we're going to press on the first fret. And I'm going to put my third finger on the third string and uh, play the A, the note A, uh, on the second, which is the second fret on the G string or third string. Okay. Youngest, some, of the, some of the kids laugh at that too, and I'm not really sure why either. Anyway, we're now playing a B7. So, and this one begins on the fifth string, the A string. We're holding the note B. Okay. And we've got this little triangular shape here. So second fret on the fifth string, first fret on the fourth string, and second fret on the third string open second string and we can add our pinky to the second fret of the first string okay or well, the E string now let's give that a shot well, I actually killed off a note you probably heard that pick him individually not bad that's better so now we have three chords and I want you to practice each of those chords individually okay I want you to practice those chords, squeezing them, okay, relaxing and squeezing your finger back. When you start to feel really confident with each chord, that's when we start practicing um, changing between them. For the first week, if you get to that point, just change at, at a nice slow speed, but just try and be accurate in terms of what you're doing. Don't start playing, uh, you know, a, a shape that's not that chord. You know, and avoid doing it wrong and then rearranging it. You want to just take your time, see the chord in your mind, lift your fingers, and then try to land that chord together. Avoid putting one finger at a time, you know, one, two, three. We kind of want to practice placing them together once we're confident because that's how we need to change chords. We can't make that a two or three step process. It has to become a one step process. So we want to be thinking something like, even if you stop the strings, that's fine. Just move them over. Place them above and squeeze down as you strum. And I want you to do E next, okay? And then the B7, okay? And remember how I switched the fingers from the E to the B7 by just, by keeping my second finger anchored and just switching my first and third finger, okay? Obviously they're in different frets now, but I'm just thinking of that way and I add the pinky. Okay, now that is your absolute first lesson. It's just the E chord, the A chord, and the B7 chord, and that's going to form a great basis for learning uh, a made-up rockabilly tune or even some real ones. Just start with that. Please let me know in the comments. Next lesson, I'm going to teach you guys the E minor pentatonic scale, so we begin some single note stuff, um, and I, I'll probably talk about some exercises to get your fingers working as well. And we'll begin strumming those three chords. I'll teach you how to start thinking about strumming or at least changing in a rhythm or in time, even without strumming, just beginning to put your fingers under a little bit of pressure. And that's what we'll be working on next lesson. So I hope you've really enjoyed this. Please let me know what you think. I'm so excited about this. I've got a lot of content out there, but I it's become apparent that there's just not enough or I haven't done enough to help people get to a point where they're comfortable playing some of the even even sort of um, you know low-level intermediate stuff. I don't mean low-level in a derogatory way, just some of the stuff that's not too complicated, but clearly there's some people out there that aren't quite confident at that point. So um, yeah, so for the people that have given me that feedback, thank you very much, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next lesson.